Buongiorno amici, oggi abbiamo un giocattolo di spazio. Good morning, my friends. That was my Italian introduction because this toy just arrived from Italy. So my rusty Italian was deemed to be appropriate for the introduction. So welcome. Welcome back, everyone. Good to have you here. And as always, make yourself comfortable. Slide into that cozy chair of yours, whether you're at the coffee house your own house, the workstation, the work cubicle, the work office with the corner window. Grab the steaming cup of coffee, wake up, rub the Sandman out of your eyes, or unwind from your long day at work. You're on another time zone and you're, you're chilling out with your glass of rosé or maybe a white wine spritzer or a martini with an olive or my favorite scotch and soda with a couple of ice cubes in there and you're ready to look at another cool toy but before you do if you're a lurker and you're browsing through do me a favor and please subscribe to the channel you will be glad you did because you will see something very cool almost daily that you won't see anywhere else like for instance this moonship supersonic by masudaya toys. This is an uncommon version of a toy they made uh, several different variations. I can't even tell you how many variations. At least could be half a dozen. This is among the more colorful, but, but I think the actions on this one are a little more pedestrian. I do like the colors though. And, uh, you know, after the colors on that motorcycle, you know, I had a discussion with uh, Marcy, a fellow collector, which I referenced on that motorcycle. You know, there's something about the colors from the 19, the early 1950s and prior and the layering of the colors. It just is a little bit more appealing than the later, more primary heavy colors that they used after, you know, probably later 50s, they started going with the, the deeper primary colors. And it makes a difference. Not to say that these aren't spectacular, but it's clearly different eras. And you see this also, I, I noticed it on the posters. You know, if you look at the 20s and 30s and even 40s lithographs up until the 50s, then the colors and obviously the designs change too. And you notice that. So I, I guess it's good to have separation of the eras, right? But anyway, um, let's start with this enormous box. This is a big toy. As you can see here, another two-hand job. Let me move the toy back. I'm going to probably have to pick up the camera just to follow this toy. I was actually going to do it as a two-parter and move the toy somewhere else, but I'm too lazy today. So you have this moon ship. This kind of reminds me of the space shuttle. So it was like a harbinger of the design a little bit. And you can see the I guess that's the Earth, the green part of the Earth in the background. Maybe all that uh, global warming caused the greenhouse effect, right? And we got all these lush plants now growing over here. And it's, well, I guess it's in the blue sky. And this single pilot is flying away happy. And there's another one there. Maybe they're evacuating. It's one of like those catastrophe Armageddon movies. Where they're all abandoning and ship. Or maybe they're just exploring. Who the hell knows what they're doing? I mean, keep in mind, this was in the 60s. They're in like the Star Trek era. So they were just probably cruising along. And here they are. Great artwork here on the side panel, right? Because this is completely different from the cover. They're looking at their ship saying, whoa, is this guy going to leave without us? Maybe they're punking him. Maybe these, whoever's left in the ship is going to punk these guys. You can see here, shows you underneath. You know, this this toy is, a, I shouldn't spoil, but it's a whistler, man. Like the whistling uh, kooky spooky tree. Non-stop, non-stop bump and go. So there's your box. Very cool graphic design. <clears throat> Very colorful. Man, this thing is big. Forces me to do all kinds of gyrations to get back and forth here. And... The toy itself, you can see here, got a nice pilot. Look how, you know, as they got a little more sophisticated, they were able to line up, let's see if I could zoom in a little closer. They started lining up body halves a little bit better, not perfect, but better than the early attempts. And you can see he's got a full lithograph cockpit in here. 
Behind it was kind of a missed opportunity. Looks like there's a hole there. I don't think there's any lights in this, so which is kind of a missed opportunity. But oh well, what can you do? You can't have it all. And here's uh, one of his co-pilots there. Maybe that's the navigator. And these are cut out. It's an opening. They should have put lights in there. I don't know why they didn't. Here's underneath, kind of like a big egg. Here's your Masadaya logo. And they do have some running lights back there. Maybe that's the tail, the brake lights when they come in for their landing. Try to get that a little clearer. And that's pretty much it. Very simple. A lot of primary colors. Nice. But the, the green on this is really nice. Reminds me of um, uh, of a Mopar. Mopar had a green like this. I forgot the name. It's not the Sublime, but it was another green, like this weird dark metallic green. Pretty rare. I saw it on a Dodge Daytona. And it's pretty striking in person. Oh, yeah, and they have a like a UFO on this tail fin. I find kind of weird, you know, a flying saucer. How cool is that? And I like the font, too, Moonship. I guess it was limited to moon runs. And again, another missed opportunity. I, I, I got to tell you, honestly, I feel like this is when they, you know, kind of a transition to cheapening. Because back here, they could have put some gel, started making, you know, made it a little more uh, distinctive, attractive, appealing. And it was probably like, hey, we got these dies, we got these stampings, let's make another version, but we want to kind of cheapen it as opposed to uh, making it a little more, uh, you know, uh, elaborate, right? So to me, it seems more like a cost cutting. The other ones uh, work like with the whistle, things like that. So they also took out features as well. I'm trying to think of the other ones they had. I think they, they, the, the uh, Sonicon rocket, which worked with the... Uh, what was it, the Helmholtz uh, feature where you blew the whistle? Um, th did they have a Radicon version of this this ship? They had a lot of different versions. But anyway, so uh, again, this looks like it would have, to me, would have came later and they took features out, cost cutting, but it's still very attractive. And because of that, I think it's a little rarer too. So anyway, uh, let's see, how best to turn this puppy on and show you, I guess. Hmm. Let, you know what? Let me pan out just a little bit. I'll go to the switch over here. I'm going to flip him around. Here's a switch over here, by the way, that little lever. And uh, we'll, we'll turn it on here and see how it goes. And then if there's actually two. I'll just show you. You can, you can see that you go forward or backwards. So let's go forward first. Well, that didn't take long. <laughs> no way i'm not gonna chase this guy clear across the room so anyway Ooh, nelly that's it that's your uh supersonic the supersonic being the whistling sound your supersonic moonship uh, this was a little kind of a haphazard video but anyway I think it got the point across. So thanks as always for joining me. If you like it, don't like it, uh, ambivalent towards the video, do me a favor, thumb it up anyway. I would greatly appreciate it. <laughs> and uh, don't forget to subscribe, share the video at all the other platforms that are shareable, and uh, leave a remark. With that, thanks again for joining me. I appreciate your time, and I will talk to you later.